Did Anthony Gordy truly say, my client is not in a hurry? Yeah, it's one of those famous quotes behind the Sagrada Familia. I've heard it too. Legend says when asked about the timeline of the church's construction, he pointed to the sky and said those very words. Right? Somehow it tells you everything you need to know about the man and his masterpiece. Not in the sense of a client impatiently looking over your shoulder, but a spiritual architect patiently awaiting divine inspiration. You know, I always find it breathtaking how Gaudi devoted his entire life to this project, knowing he would never see it completed. His dedication is certainly something to admire. The project, the Sagrada Familia, still continues nearly a century after his death. And here we are, poised on the edge of that story, eagerly peeling back the layers of history, artistry, faith, complexity. Just a whole universe waiting to be explored. Definitely. Andrew, why don't you lead us into it with another captivating quote from Gaudi? Sure, here goes. Originality consists in going back to the origin. And now, let's delve into this unfinished symphony of stone and spirit. Antonio Gordi once said, Originality, how much originality there is in returning to the origin, how much novelty in returning to the things we have always known. That's true, Andrew. Gordi's designs were original, unique, because he took inspiration from nature, his greatest teacher. Can you share more about how did he incorporate nature in his architectural designs, Abigail? Certainly. Gaudi's approach to structures and designs was described as bioarchitecture, because of the biological inspirations found in them. From the study of trees to understand columns to the natural light sought to invoke divinity, Gaudi was known for his organic form in architecture. The organic design reflects the respect Gaudi had for God's work. And it's not just the form, but it's the management of light that gives life to the basilica, isn't it? Yes, you're right. An essential element of Gaudí's architectural vision was the management of light. He wanted the interior of the Sagrada Familia to resemble a forest, with light streaming down through the columns like sunlight through trees. That's incredible. Nature inside a cathedral. And didn't Gaudí integrate a lot of religious symbolism into the Sagrada Familia? Very true for Gaudí. Every ornament had to have a meaning and serve a structural purpose. From the sculptures on the façade to the nave's design, you'll see deep Catholic symbolism intertwined seamlessly. The way Gaudi combined the elements of nature, light and religious symbolism is intensely personal and revolutionary. Arguably, one of Gaudi's most unique architectural feats is the tree columns of the Sagrada Familia. Tree columns? Right, Gaudi envisioned the interior of Sagrada Familia to be like an enchanted forest, so he transformed simple columns into organic branching trees. The columns represent sturdy tree trunks, which further branch out as they reach the ceiling, forming multiple secondary and tertiary branches. How did he bring this vision to a concrete structure? Oh, it's a fascinating intertwining of art and engineering. Gaudi used the concept of hyperboloids and paraboloids for designing these columns. These shapes could accommodate the shifting loads of the dynamic structure. This formed the Gaudi key design technique. What's the Gaudi key? I'm glad you asked. Essentially, the Gaudi key is a design technique that uses mathematical and geometrical principles to artistically distribute structural loads across surfaces. By aligning the columns along helical paths that imitate natural forms like seashells or leaves, Gaudi was able to make them incredibly resilient against mechanical stresses. So the aesthetics of the columns are not merely ornamental. This design helps improve the building's resistance to damage. Exactly. By mimicking nature's patterns, Gaudi's columns not only captivate you with their elegance, but also efficiently anchor the weight of the entire structure. The way he embodied both form and function truly displays his genius. It's almost like these columns are living, growing structures adapting and supporting the environment around them. They help us redefine our understanding of what architecture can be. Abigail, given your technical knowledge, could you give us a detailed look at the stunning facades that adorn the exterior of the Sagrada Familia? Of course, Andrew. Let's start with the Nativity facade. This was the first facade that Gaudi himself completed. It's a visual narrative of Jesus Christ's birth and seeds the stage for the entire monument. 
The sculptures of the Holy Family, angels and animals are all encrusted in rich detail. It has a certain organic and expressive quality, and like its title, presents the joyous moment of nativity. How about the passion facade? What story does it tell? The complete opposite of the nativity facade, Paul. The passion facade is stark, austere and almost haunting. It narrates the last days of Christ, his suffering, death and resurrection. The sculptures here, carefully chiselled, evoke a sense of grief and sorrow. Gaudi described it as the hardened skeleton of a decomposed corpse. It was Gaudi's intention to create a stark contrast reflecting the brutality of Christ's sacrifice for mankind. Now it wasn't completed in Gaudi's lifetime, but his models and plans were meticulously followed. That paints a powerful picture. And what about the glory facade? The glory facade, still under construction, is set to be the largest and most striking of the three. The key concept here is to illustrate the path of ascension. It's like an elaborate doorway that represents the road to God, featuring scenes from life and death. While we can't see it yet in all its glory, it's designed to encapsulate the entire human experience, from sin to salvation. And once the glory facade is completed, the Sagrada Familia will essentially become a giant explorable sculpture of the Book of Revelations. That's incredible. So every piece, every sculpture contributes to this evolving narrative of Christ's journey? Precisely, Paul. Sagrada Familia is not just another church. It's centuries of faith, culture and passion architecturally entwined. Its vivid storytelling and innovative design weave together to create an interconnected, three-dimensional gospel that unravels layer by layer as you explore it. Gaudi's design of Sagrada Familia wasn't static, rather it was and is continually evolving. This concept of living architecture encapsulates its ongoing construction, symbolic of the changing course of life and nature. But it's not merely the physical structure where this principle is used. I remember seeing pictures of the interior, and the way the light poured in was exquisite. Is that a part of Gaudi's living architecture? Absolutely, Paul. Gaudi once said light achieves maximum harmony at an inclination of 45 degrees because it casts fewer shadows. He incorporated this belief in his architectural marvel. He configured the windows, skylights and the orientation of the building to allow natural light to filter in at the right angles, creating an ethereal illumination that seems to breathe with the progression of the day. It's a living structure not only in its physical progression, but also in its interplay with light. Remarkable. Gaudi's masterpiece also features an extensive use of stained glass windows. The theme of light and colour becomes tangible when the sunlight streams through these vibrantly coloured windows, transforming the entire basilica. It's like natural light is an intrinsic building material for Sagrada Familia. Indeed. Gaudi poetically referred to his concept as creating a Bible of light and colour, it's as though the entire monument transcends into a spectacle of faith, narrating a divine tale through the sophisticated play of light and shade. God's book, always open and ready to teach at any moment and in any corner, does not need to go after scholars to learn, but, on the contrary, scholars need to go after it. This was a quote from Antoni Gaudi, and it truly encapsulates his deeply ingrained faith and its profound influence on his works especially with the Sagrada Familia. In what ways did Gaudi's faith translate into his work, Abigail? A lot can be said about Gaudi's faith. He was a devout Catholic and his beliefs found profound expression in Sagrada Familia. Every element was a conscious synthesis of both his religious devotion and architectural virtuosity. His concept of a living basilica wasn't merely a physical phenomenon. It reflected his belief in the evolving nature of faith, just like life itself. That's fascinating, considering the Sagrada Familia isn't just bricks and mortar. She has become a symbol of Gaudi's lifelong dedication and commitment to his faith. Absolutely true, Andrew. In fact, Gaudi spent the last 15 years of his life entirely dedicated to the construction of Sagrada Familia. He even lived within the Basilica's workshops in his final years, completely consumed by his obsession. Let's not forget that it was not only an architectural project for him, it was his spiritual legacy. I've always felt a sense of determination from Gaudi when it comes to his work. His intense dedication to this monumental project does help me understand his perspective better now. Gaudi once said, Our Lord has given me an inspiration. I owe it to him to carry it out. 
so I believe his obsessive commitment to the Sagrada Familia was a testament to his endeavor to honor his divine inspiration. Abigail, since you're closer to the architectural side of things, I was hoping you could explain more about the school of Sagrada Familia that was part of the original project. Why was there a need for a school within such an architectural marvel? That's an interesting aspect, Paul. And Tony Gaudi, while being a devout Catholic, held education in high regard. The school was primarily built for the children of the workers involved in the construction of Sagrada Familia itself. Gaudi was known to cherish children, and his concern for workers' children during those times was an embodiment of his empathy. Wow! So he wasn't only an architect, but also held a genuine concern for the well-being of his workers' children. Did the school influence the project in any significant way? It absolutely did. Architecturally speaking, the school building provided Gaudi a complementary space where he could experiment with important technical innovations, such as the ruled surfaces geometry. This school is also one of the very few buildings realized by Gaudi outside of the Sagrada Familia itself during his later life. It's small, yet its influence was profound. Understanding the intent behind Gaudi's work really adds more depth to this unprecedented project. His focus on merging faith, architecture, and education is stirring. Very much so, Paul. Gaudi's narratives are deeply rooted in his life and faith. It's as if every brick narrates a part of his journey. The presence of school within the Sagrada Familia complex just adds another layer of complexity and wonder to his architectural genius. Abigail, could you share more on how Gaudi's vision for the Sagrada Familia was influenced by the Gothic and Baroque styles? Certainly, Paul. Gaudi's respect for Gothic architecture was said to be enormous, yet he was critical of its mechanical structure and sought to evolve it into something more organic. He attempted, and successfully so, to resolve the paradox of developing a new style based on archaic architecture. So you're saying he had his eyes on the past and the future, both at the same time? Exactly, Andrew. To Gaudi, the Gothic style was the great book of nature and from Baroque he borrowed the idea of theatrically using design to express emotion. Some parts of Sagrada Familia are highly dramatic, much like a Baroque piece, while retaining characteristics of the Gothic style. And this whole vision also had a spiritual component, right? Absolutely, Paul. The idea was to create a serene space where one could contemplate and pray. Gaudi planned to incorporate a large cloister or a secluded courtyard for this. The cloister would enclose the building isolating it from the city's noise and creating an environment conducive for meditation. Gaudi's genius seems truly boundless. He knew how to leave an impact with every aspect of his creation. Now we need to consider the biggest mystery of Sagrada Familia, its incredibly long construction process. As we know, Gaudi dedicated over 40 years of his life to the building before his untimely death in 1926. Abigail, Weren't Gaudi's plans partly lost after his death? That must have added to the challenge of moving forward with the project. Correct, Andrew. In fact, most of the plans, sketches and models were destroyed during the Spanish Civil War, leaving archives scant. The architects that succeeded Gaudi had to work with extremely limited original resources, decoding Gaudi's intentions and vision. Couldn't that have been risky? I mean, interpreting someone else's vision is not an easy task. Absolutely, it was nothing short of a Herculean task. They had to navigate through a thin line of architectural interpretation and innovation. But I like to think it as a link in the chain of collective innovation, fueled by Gaudi's original spark. From a layman's perspective, it's just a miracle that they managed to continue the project under such circumstances at all. It seems like the spirit of Gaudi continued to guide them. Well said, Andrew. It's a testament to Gaudi's imaginative prowess and his successor's dedication that the Sagrada Familia, despite all odds, stands today as an architectural wonder. Abigail, I heard you mention earlier about the use of innovative techniques and materials. Can you elaborate on that? Sure, Andrew. Gaudi was a pioneer in using new materials and technologies of his time. For instance, he substituted stones with lighter materials like brick and ceramic, maintaining the structure's aesthetic aspect. To manage the intricate design, he also used a revolutionary technique involving the use of suspended weights on strings. 
which gave an accurate representation of compression forces, making it easier to visualize the final structure. That's quite innovative. So did the Spanish Civil War disrupt the project entirely? Indeed, Paul. The Spanish Civil War in 1936 wreaked havoc. Many of Gaudi's models and design documents were destroyed, but the dedicated team later managed to salvage and reconstruct these original plaster models. To stay true to Gaudi's vision, they used photogrammetric and laser techniques to study and reproduce the models, enabling them to regain the lost architectural knowledge. So, even the war couldn't dampen the spirit to continue Gaudi's legacy. Something like that, Andrew. It might have been a setback, but it also gave room for innovative restoration techniques, showing us once again that architecture is creation and recreation. Resilience in the face of adversity, kind of like the Sagrada Familia itself. All right, what's everyone's bet on when the Sagrada Familia will be complete? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Estimates range from a few years to even a decade, depending on several factors like funding, manpower and technology. I bet Barcelona can't wait to see its finished glory. Imagine what it could do for their tourism, already a major player in the city's economy. Absolutely, Andrew. Completion could elevate Barcelona's global reputation even further. But then there's also this controversy about the legality of the construction itself. Controversy? What do you mean? In 2016, it was revealed that the construction of Sagrada Familia has been carried on without a building permit for well over a century. This caused quite a stir, especially among locals. The Basilica finally got its permit in 2019. Wow, building without a permit for more than a hundred years. That's a level of oops, isn't it? Quite an oops, Andrew. But in response to the controversy, the Basilica's trustees agreed to pay around 36 million euros towards local public facilities and transport infrastructure. An attempt to preserve the good relationship with the city. Trust Gaudi's masterpiece to stir up such drama even after all these years. Still, I can't wait to see her finished. The Sagrada Familia truly embodies her creator's spirit, monumental, enduring, and ever aspiring to completion. Speaking of the spirit of the Catalans, isn't the Sagrada Familia kind of a tribute to them? I'd say more than just a tribute, Andrew. The Sagrada Familia essentially intertwines with the Catalan identity and pride, it's like a three-dimensional canvas that represents the Catalans' aesthetic sensibility and adherence to faith. Does the church reflect any traditional Catalan elements? Absolutely, Paul. You can see this in the nativity scenes which depict traditional Catalonian shepherds and animals. That's intriguing. Goes to show that architecture goes beyond just structures and walls, doesn't it? And it's not just the nativity scenes. It almost feels like Gaudi himself is illustrating the self-perception of his people through the church's overall design. Kind of like an architectural microcosm of Catalonia. Exactly. From a civil engineering perspective, Gaudi wasn't just outlining a blueprint. He was capturing and immortalizing the self-expression of the Catalans as they were in his time, and arguably as they are even today. Gaudi really did bleed his heart out for the Sagrada Familia, didn't he? He truly did, Andrew. His devotion to the project, his passion for his people, it all culminated magnificently in the Sagrada Familia. You know, as we discuss this magnificent basilica, it's impossible to ignore the Catholic symbolism that seeps so prominently from its structures, right from the entrances, towers, the central nave, all the way to the altars and chapels, aren't they? Absolutely, Andrew. The Catholic symbolism isn't just a feature of Sagrada Familia. It's quite literally built into its bones, and this applies to every facet, entrances, towers, all of it. Gaudi and his team went all out with this, didn't they? Yes, they did. In fact, if you look close enough, you'll also notice how Gaudi has intricately utilised the stained glass windows to showcase the Catholic faith. Could you give us an example, Abigail? Sure, Paul. Each façade of the Sagrada Familia corresponds to a significant event in Christ's life and the liturgical calendar. Also, the story of Christ is literally bursting through the church's large stained glass windows. They transition from cooler colours denoting Christ's birth to warmer ones representing his crucifixion and resurrection. That's mind-boggling. And what about the towers? There's symbolism there too, right? Very true, Andrew. 
When completed, the basilica will have 18 towers. These towers are also drenched in symbolism. Twelve of them represent the apostles, four represent the evangelists, one for the Virgin Mary, and the tallest one dedicated to Jesus Christ. Wow, Gaudi didn't leave any stone unturned, did he? No, he didn't. His dedication is even more impressive considering he knew he wouldn't live to see the basilica's completion. As a civil engineer, I genuinely look up to Gaudi. His influence on modern architecture is substantial. He had this uncanny ability to combine architecture and nature, presenting them as one entity rather than separate elements. That's fascinating, Abigail. Can you mention a few modern architects influenced specifically by Gaudi's work? Sure. One example that immediately comes to my mind is Mark Burry, a New Zealand architect who was significantly influenced by Gaudi and has been involved in the restoration works of Sagrada Familia. He used Gaudi's distinct design principles like ruled surface design in his works, like Wiese Santiago Calatrava, another renowned architect, is notable for his bio architectura, style mimicking nature's geometric forms. In fact, many of his bridges and stations have a bone like appearance that resonates with Gaudi's organic architecture. You got me wondering, how has this organic architecture influenced the modern design principles? Well, Gaudi's organic architecture has prompted a shift towards more environmentally aware designs, where the built environment mimics and merges with natural surroundings. It's also about designing structures in a more human-centric way that feels natural and harmonious. So to answer your question, Paul, Gaudi effectively expanded how we perceive architecture's possibilities by intimately associating it with nature. And the modernista movement. How did Gaudi contribute to that? As one of the leading figures of the Catalan Modernista movement, Gaudi played a pivotal role. His unique approach, heavily influenced by nature and organic forms, pushed the boundaries of the movement. He introduced new construction techniques and materials, blending the conventional with the inventive, which has been continued till date. Amazing man, right? A true revolutionary. It's so inspiring how Gaudi's work is still influencing architects across the globe. Thinking about the Sagrada Familia, do you think the long-standing construction has inadvertently positively impacted Barcelona's tourism? Tourists are intrigued by the unfinished masterpiece, wouldn't you say so? Absolutely. It's almost like a pilgrimage for architecture aficionados. The awe of seeing Gaudi's vision gradually shape up, year after year, has an irresistible charm. It's a significant boost for the tourism economy. But how do locals feel about this? They live it daily. So I did some reading. The locals have mixed feelings. On one hand, they appreciate how Gaudi's Basilica puts Barcelona on the world stage. Seeing construction's cranes as part of the city skyline has become part of Barcelona's identity. It's a source of pride. But then they also complain about the never-ending influx of tourists and the increasing commercialization. Andrew, you had a point about future construction changes. Could the church losing its current charm be a concern? I think the ongoing construction adds to its appeal. But commercialization might bring unwanted changes, more shops, guided tours, the place might lose its serenity. Is this our human paradox? We save a place by turning it into an attraction losing its soul. That's looming question indeed. But as long as we respect the place's sanctity, heritage and the architect's intent, Sagrada Familia's charm will be preserved.